on Scrub Gamers. Welcome back to another video here at Scrub Games, and today we are going on with another ranking video, and this time moving up from the commons from the last one we did to ranking the uncommons from Set One Awaken Pulse for the Fusion for the Dragon Ball Super Card Game Fusion World. So we're going to go through just like we did before to see which ones we feel are busted, strong, decent, okay, or trash from the uncommons for the set, and we're going to go through the color order. So we will go through red, blue, green, and then yellow like we did last time. So without further ado, before we get into the video, remember that we're on the way to a thousand subs, and you can help out with that by liking the video, comment down below any like if you agree with any of these um, rankings, we disagree and why. That would be great to get some discussion going and find out where we feel they really should go. And also don't forget the most important thing is to subscribe, keep you updated with my videos as and when they drop, and also by clicking the notification bell you get alerts when videos when they do drop. So without out of the way, let's get in and rank these cards. So, right, so we got a fair few cards, and with this with this uh, rarity, we also get the super combos for each of the colors. So, in the set, as well as the starters, you get a, there's a super combo. So, you've got, from the first set in the star decks, you've got a choice of super combo from, from each color. So, there's no real benefit, they all do the same thing, they do exactly the same thing for all the super combos in each color. Just uh, the only difference is the character. So some characters can make more of a difference than the other, or even actually for red, the different. Well, for red and yeah, for red and yellow, I think it's the traits as well make a difference. So yeah, let's have a look at these and start off with the because also we got them in um, set order as well, so we have a look and see what we got. So start off with the first one, we got Whis. So Whis is a one cost 10k with Faki combo. Similar to, I think, similar to Vados that we had in the common one. And his effect is activate main once per turn. Choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and he gets minus 5k power for the turn. Now, I feel this is a decent one. I feel this is decent because it's not got the greatest combo power for 5k. And it's one cost, but it is a turn, turn one play. And it also is minusing every turn. So, unlike we've got with the, um, I think, the Weiss from the, we've got the Weiss in the Star Deck as well as the common. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's common in Star Deck. And that has kind of reverse stats being a 5k power, but 10k combo, so a bit better in combo power. But that's just an on play minus something by 5k. Whereas this is every turn, what's on board, you minus something by 5k. Meaning that you can get rid of those pesky little one drops your opponent might have just to like combo off or little one drops that they're getting like draw, power, draw from and effects from. Just to get like get them off the board, get rid of them for free. And the longer this stays about, the more you can keep doing it. And if they haven't got one drops, they got battle cards, you want to swing until they get rid of them. You can at least make them cheaper to do so. So I feel this is a decent uncommon for the set. Good turn one play. And then the longer it's still the board, the more value you get out of it. And then we've got the next one. So Whis, decent card. Then we got Roshi. So this is what we talked about in the common video when we were all about the um extra little um the extra cards, the searches and battle tricks. And Roshi is yeah, the reverse stats of Whis, which is a 1 cost, but it's a 5k power and 10k combo, so better combo power, so it's good in hand. And his effect is similar to that Bulma we saw in blue, where add a bit main once per turn, add one card from your left to your hand as the cost. During this turn, next time you act, use an extra card from your hand, reduce the cost by one red. So, it's got more of a cost in Bulma, where like Bulma follows the kind of theme for blue being if you've got a low hand size or a 7 or less hand size, you get this effect. Whereas Roshi, it's take a life to do it. So you need to take a life for this, whereas Bulma doesn't need to do anything like that. Just have several less cards in hand. So Bulma can be used more often and yeah, more often than Roshi, but Roshi has the benefit of being a one cost self awakener. So it helps you take your life, get yourself down the four, so you can flip over and get more benefit out of your leader and make it a bit stronger. So this is like a staple for red and we will be going over staples for each colour as well in another video. And yeah, this is very nice because not only does it help you awaken, but also allows to reduce the cost of an extra card by free. So for free, so making those search universe seven and universe six searches free to use, turn, like the turn you use this, just use them for free. Use them as a searcher, or the universe seven one uses a battle trick, or even the battle trick from um, what's it called, from the star deck, using that battle trick for free as well. You can also make the god come here by free by using playing this out, using the effect swing combo this off, and then now. Can use the cost of something by red, one red, and then also the cost of the um, God Come Out House reduced if you have no by never one, but if you have no um, battle cards board, I mean, you can then for free play that and it pops out as 50, uh, 30k or less. So that's pretty good, and I feel this is a very strong um, uncommon because it's self awakening, reducing the uh, cost of extra card, and you've got two extra cards to go really well with this if you see them just to help that consistency going as well. So I feel this is a very good one, and like, this is a staple in red. 
then we move on to the next ones. So we've got some of the Universe 6 cards. So we've already seen that the Universe 6 cards compared to the Universe 7 ones have a downside where um they aren't, they don't really have a leader to support them. So they're not as great as the Universe 7 ones. And the Universe 7 are a lot better because they get a boost on power. And also they've got more synergy because they've got a leader. So with the Khalifa, this one is a 5 cost 25k. So not the greatest power compared to its cost. So you've got 4 cost is 30k and things like that. But, and it is only 5k combo, but it's got a decent effect in that on play. You can free play out a KO with cost 3 or for less from your hand, straight to the board from your hand. So, like, currently we only have one target, so you have to find that one. That's the only that's the downside for this being power isn't as great as the cost, combo power isn't as great as it could be. The effect is pretty good, but the targets for the effect aren't great. So, I'm going to put this in OK tier. It's not trash because it does like really good, but. And it's got some good, it's got some kind of consistency, but it doesn't really have a benefit of having a leader. And also it's got limited targets, meaning you only got one every target you can play four of. You need to find both this and that and get the turn five to drop it. So it was okay. It's, yeah, just, it's just okay. It's not trash, but it is okay. Then we got Kaba. So I'm gonna put this as decent for a super combo. Because it does the exact same as they have super combo. Super combo is good. You got like you can only have four in your deck, and they're very good to help defend a lot better. Because you, when you defend, like, you can use it aggressively. It's only a tanky combo. That's not much. That's most cards are like that. But when you do it defensively, it's a twenty k combo to help combat some bigger swings a lot easier with less uh, using less cards. And I feel this is decent for the super super combo because it's got a synergy with um, the extra card. Same with the Shin from the Sardec, where they've got the tag Universe Six. You can use the Universe Six extra card to find it. So it's got a kind of synergy with that. And that's why I put it decent rather than yeah, just okay. Because most of the super cards are okay, just the same thing. Um, but yeah, like, actually you know the all I think all the super combos would be decent. Just some might be a bit higher due to what the um, yeah. But this one's got a benefit of being searchable where not many have so yeah that's that for the super common nothing more to say then we have the kale so the kale to go with the khalifa so it's a free cost so you can free play it out from the khalifa it's 20k power with 10k commerce or he's got pretty decent stats like 20k it's not too bad it could be a bit better but it's, it's fine and you can always boost it with devados as well and then it's a 10k uh combo as well so it's decent combo power and its effect is one attacking once per turn if you have a khalifa with battle card with five cost or less or five cost so it's just kind of active mode. So with this with this combo of Khalifa and uh, Kale, for two energy, no sorry, for five energy, you can drop Khalifa and then free play out the Kale and get three swings out of that, not including like, your leader. So four four swings with these two, and including your leader. So I'm gonna switch stick this in okay with Khalifa because you've got to get them both together to do it. So you've got to find both these cards together, which you've got kind of, kind of a little bit of help by just drawing for your deck to find it, using you've got to search as well for them as well. But it's just you need to find both of them, and then the payoff isn't as great as some of five costs. If you want to go wide, this is a decent option. If you want to go tall, you've got better options. Uh, so, yeah, I think this is just okay. Next one we've got for uncommons, we have uh, Beerus. No, that's no, not Beerus, uh, Shin. So we've got never Shin. This one's a free cost 20k, so not too bad. Like, so the power the cost is not too bad. I think a combo is good, and it's got a lovely little permanent that matches really well with the uh, Beerus lead. Where permanent, your turn, your leader gets card of destruction in its special traits. Well, if your leader would your leader with card destruction in its special trait, which is so far just Beerus, gets 10k power. So with this on board, with one of these on board, your opponent gets an extra 10k power, so it's either that is then 30k crit on the unawakened side, and then 30k just draw a card on your awakened side. And the more you put these down, the more power your leader gets. Just as long as you have two of these on board, that's two 20k swings at your lead, threatening awakened leads. And also 40k swing from your lead, which then involves a super combo, plus another 5k to combat was easy as possible. So I can put this as decent, because that's very good with the Beerus lead. Being able to, not too bad with free energy, just be able to push, like make your lead just one, make it bigger, so you have to put more combat power into it. While you're not doing anything, and just getting that, and getting that as well. So, yeah, I feel that's decent. It is not, it's not too bad to remove this, but then... Free energy just to get a 20k swing in and make your leader. You're potentially getting 30k power uh, from free energy for this. So extra like 10k for each, um, technically for each energy you're paying, which is not too bad. And then next one we got is Android 17. So this is a two cost 10k blocker that has 10k combat power and when blocking it gets 15k power for the turn. Now I'm gonna put this okay. It's not like it's not gonna be trash because it's a blocker. I can know blockers. It's easy to get eat all the colors. But it's got synergy with Universe 7, uh, seven be a, it can be, like, it can be searched, 
and also yeah, it makes me basically search. It's got a synergy with that. And it's these techie combos, not too bad. And it helps with crit leads. Like, even though you don't, like, crit leads aren't too bad. This helps with crit leads to avoid taking um, damage in the early turns from crits. You can block it 25k with another 20k. And you have to have a combo up to get rid of it, which you lose more cards. And then you just, like, yeah, okay. If you don't combo out of it, you just take this off from critical for a turn. So, I this is okay. More that it, more because it's a. Yeah, more because it's a universe 7 card, but yeah, blockers aren't that like sturdy in this game due to how much like you got some easy ways to remove things that are rest them in certain colours and negating and stuff like that. Then you got Android 18, so this I feel is I think but this is okay for this Android 18, because it's a 2 cost 15k. You take a comp, actually I'll put it in I'll put it in decent. Because it has potential to be a lot better, because it's a 2 cost 15k, so and it's a universe 7 card, so with the Goku lead, gains extra 5 to K, meaning it can then threaten Waking Lead. There's Tenki combo as well, so it's good defensively for combing, or well, comboing, or if, like aggressively comboing. And it's got an on play, where you look at the top 5 cards of your deck, reveal up to 1 Krillin and or up to 1, or up to 1 Android 17 card in, in your hand. Uh, place it at the bottom of your deck in a random order. So this is a nice little bit of uh, searcher. Really goes really well finding the two starter deck um, Creator Android 17s, which help you awaken what puts pressure on. So that's really nice. And um, yeah, I feel it's decent because the more um, tyrants we get to search for it, the better it becomes. And it's still complied pressure with the uh, with the Goku leader, as, as well finding cards that help you awaken as well, which is good. Now the next one we've got is Grand Priest so next uncommon. So this is a free cost 20k, still not too bad for the cost of power. Only 5k combo, not great. You've got two permanent permanents. First one that I did this quite badly is that it can't attack. So the first permanent can't attack, so it's a bit pointless paying that energy for it. But the other effect is permanent, your turn. All your battle cards with Angel and the special traits gets get 10k power. So yeah, that's not too bad, just the only problem is we haven't got many angels really. So if I read we've got um Two Whis and a Vados plus itself. So it, it itself, during your turn is 30k, but it can't attack. Your Whis becomes, you're like, Whis becomes a 20k. Your Vados becomes, I think, a 20k for one energy. And then your um, Star Deck Whis becomes a 15k. So it's boost some, but it's not many targets. So I'm going to put this in trash at the moment. But there is potentially it can get stronger. Just at the moment, it's not very good. It just needs more support. But yeah, currently it's just terrible. It might even not even be that great, depending on like how they do with sets. If they do like how they did in Masters, where you don't really repeat the same kind of theme in the same color for that long, and they might do different ones. So it might be worse we get that support. But it's got potential in the future. But at the moment, it's just terrible for what it does because it can't attack. So that is it for red for the uncommons. So no extra cards in red for uh, uh well in uncommon red extra cards. So already we've seen that for red we've got one strong card in Roshi four decent cards in the Wii Super Combo Shin uh, Super Combo Kaba Shin and Android 17 we've got okay cards in uh, Khalifa Kale and Android 17 and one bad card or cash card in Great Priest so now we go on to the next lot of cards so start off with blue for the next one we got some Asu and I feel this is a decent card uh, actually I'm going to go ahead and say this is a strong card for uh, Tomasu because one thing that um, a lot of decks do early is play their cantrips out so they can kind of get some value, get some uses out there for energy in the early turns before they can start doing things like ramping or just get set up. And Tomasu is a great one in that it's just a one cost, it's only 5k power, very good in Goku Blacks, basically you just reduce the cost of Goku Blacks. And it's a tanky combo, so it's very least a good combo card. And on play, you choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, will cost one or less, place at the bottom of his owner's deck. Now that's really good. So like when you've got right red, where you want to get that Roshi out, so you can start like taking your life to awaken, get over awake side as quick as possible. Or you've got like um in yellow, you've got the Ginyu to like just draw cards, like uh filter and stuff like that. Or your opponents like got in blue, they've got P laugh down, and they can start doing so they can start doing P laugh. Or green they've got a tank for so you can combo with the Player turn. That's just great. It's coming down. Big use that one energy. Bottom deck in that one, which is that win. Bottom deck to get control for the entire deck to find it again because you're shut the game the entire deck. And then you can use this like, combo to take a offensively or defensively. I feel that's very strong for a one drop. And 
he has more benefit in Goku Black by just being as a mass suit bottom deck for a Goku Black's uh, reduce cost. I feel bottom deck and one drops at that with, with there being some pretty good one drops is a very good effect. I feel it's a very strong effect bottom deck on that. So bottom decking is very good in this game because you're n really never really going to see that card again unless you control for the entire deck, which only green, no, well, only yellow can really do like very effectively. Now we've got the next blue card being the Goku. Now this is going to be same okay. It's just blocker. It's one of those helpful ones that blue has to help defend against uh, the crit leads. But that's it. It's the exact same as Android 17. It's just weaker than Android 8, uh, 17 in terms of its combo power. And it can also be 25k to defend. A, lot, a little bit easier. It doesn't need to worry about being at the um, blocking to do that. But still, easy ways to get around blockers. Same kind of thing for um, Trunks here. I think Trunks is okay, but because um, it's a blocker, but it's got a nice little on-play effect where it can take a life, add it to one card for your life to help you awaken while also defending yourself. But once again, blockers is easy to get around, so it was an okay, okay one. Just um, I feel like yeah, you got better, you got ever ways to awaken in blue, some easier ones as well. Uh, but I feel this is like yes, yeah, okay card blocker, can take a life. Good combo power, but then it's just a block, it's not going to do anything much after that. And then we have the next one be Vegeta. I feel this one is. I feel this one is okay because it's very easy removal for free costs or less. And uh, like yellow can just lock it down, like uh, rest it, lock it down. Blue can remove, like bounce it, green can pop it, and uh, red can reduce it down to run over very easy or just get rid of it. But so I think it's just okay. It's got a nice little benefit. It's like it's kind of outside its color. It's like a blue card that's in the, it's a yellow card in the blue. Where because it's a free cost 25k, only 5k combo. So good power to cost. Not great combo power. But then it's end of the turn if you have seven or fewer cards in your hand. So it's just got active mode. But most of the time you don't want to have seven or less in your hand at, at the end of your turn. You want to have more. And then you be combo out. Use some of the cards to combo out to go down further to get the effects on in your opponent's turn. So then in your turn you've got less hand. You can start building it back up again. Not worry. So I feel this is an okay card. Don't shoot me on that, but I feel it's okay. And I feel the same thing could be said for the next one, being Mai. I've seen people play Mai to play it out, and because it's effect, it's yeah, one one drop, five k five k power, take a combo, activate main once per turn, look at the top card of your deck, place it at the bottom of your deck, or top or bottom of your deck. So you get a look and see if you want to keep that card there or bottom deck it before swinging or anything like that. But I feel this is a waste of one energy. Like it doesn't do much for one energy. You can keep it around. It's going to be easily removed, and uh, it's just. You can set up your time machine, but there's easy ways to set up your time machine plays. So I feel this is okay, because you can kind of like scry the top card of your deck. Check if you want it or not. And yeah, so. Yeah, I don't think it's that great, but then it could be better, depending on like, what more strategies you get with like looking at the top of your deck. But there's not much to go with scrying other than just seeing do I want to keep this card on the top or not? But it's not great for one energy. And then we go on to Yajirobi. So once again, super combo, it's gonna be decent. It's a decent super combo, it's got Earthling tag, but then nothing to go with the character, just basically it's a super combo. Blue doesn't have many much synergy with its super combos, so yeah, they're just decent for being super combos. And then we have the Blade of Splair. Now this one is a two cost extra card, where it's got permanent where if you have a mass battle card you reduce the cost of this card in your hand by one. And it's effect is activate main, choose up to two of your opponent's battle cards, will cost three or less, return to the his hand. So you've about two things, that's not too bad. But then, there's not going to be, most of the things that are that low, they're going to have like effects where you don't mind if they're back in hand or they serve the time at the beginning. So I don't feel this is a good card, because you're putting them back in hand, so your opponent still has access to them to combo with. And, well, you put in essentially six, up to six costs back to the hand, so they have to replay out. You'd rather get rid of them rather than giving them back the use. And it's still two energy because you're not going to be playing Zamasu's outside of Goku Black, really, apart from maybe this uh, Zamasu to help deal with some pesky one drops. But I don't feel this is a good card. That's just my sense on it. I still think it's great, and there's better ones which we'll come up to. Then we have the next one, Time Machine. I feel this is a decent card. It has done many times, it's only got one target, really. And, but it's got a very easy way to get this set up, and it's recyclable through PLAF as well. So I feel this is a decent card because it's recyclable to make keep to keep going over and using it over and over again. 
and he's got a very good target in the um, free uh, 30k two drop trunks, and that's very easy to set up in the bottom of your deck because this uh, the trunks when it attacks you go at the end of your turn you put put to the bottom of your deck, and this is an activate main. Look at the bottom part of your deck and play it to one trunks future would cost two and place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck. So essentially you play out the trunk, swing with it, bottom deck it in turn, next turn you pay time machine, get it back from the bottom of your deck, swing it again, put it back, and then recycle the time machine just for one energy, you keep constantly getting a two cost uh, for a 30k attacker for one energy every turn over at safe. So yeah. I feel this is a very like a decent card. Not super strong because you you gotta set you gotta get some setup, but it's a very decent card. Then we got black Kamehameha. There's a... Uh, this one I feel is a strong card because it's a not oh yeah it's black coming out no okay maybe I, I forgot which one we we're all about then it's because there's a there's ever extra card still in blue but this is a one cost battle trick and battle one for opponent's turn choose your leader onto one of your battle cards it gets 20k power for the battle then you can look at the top three cards of your deck and place them either at the top or the bottom of your deck in any order so you either put all three to the top in whatever you want to want or to the bottom in any order you want. So if there's one that you want there but you don't want the rest, you could have to put them still back to the top if you want to keep that one, but you can put the ones you draw it next. Or if you don't want any of the if you if like if you don't want them or you don't want to like if the other two are just really bad, you don't want them, you have to put them all to the bottom of your deck in whatever you order you want. Now I thought this is decent, because it's a nice little defend defensive one, just for one energy, you're it's like another super combo for one energy. And then you pay like predicting your future. But it's not. It's only. It's only defensive. So it's not stronger than being decent. It's not strong. So you don't get to like draw anything, replace it like Gallic Gun. But um, you get to just like see if you just set up what you want to play. Kind of like see three turns in the future, which is quite nice. Or technically two turns. Yeah. So I feel that's not too bad. So that is it for blue. So we see that with blue. Blue also has a strong, um, strong common. Blue has three good uncommons. Four okay on commons and then one trash tier. So, so far, every, both colors so far have as one strong, one trash, and a mix of decent and okay. And now we go into green. So we'll start off with the Android 16 cards for green. So we got first one being this free cost 20k blocker Android 16, where it's 10k combo and permanent your opponent's turn if you have Android 17 18 card in the energy area. This card gets uh, 10k power. So it's pretty decent for the Androids, not too much for the other ones. And it's good combo power, but it's not something you want to play. And if you're playing free energy, you want to ramp. Like normally, you want to like on your turn free, like free energy play. You want to ramp, and after that, you want to start playing bigger ones. You're not really going to want to play this. So I feel like if you need it later game to defend yourself, it's okay, but it's not going to be great because it's good combo power. A big, it's a big defensive body, for, like quite cheap to defend with, but it's not as great. Now we've got uh, Android 16. So, um, the other Android 16, we've got a 6 drop, only 15k power, 10k combo, but blocker, and it's got wing code effects. So, I'm gonna, f so already, just wait, like being quite low power for cost means it's not be any good offensively. Combo power is decent, so it can help combo out. Blocker, but that can always get around, and then wing code, it's not, that's gonna be, that's not gonna be, uh, that's gonna be a problem. Now, the only problem, I think, feel this is gonna be okay as well, because in red, it's going to get neg down straight away and not, not trigger its KO effect. Yellow is just going to tap it down. The only things that can't really get a, like around removing this is blue because blue's only got one way to get uh, get off the board, but they've got a waste uh, well play bad cards in there just to get rid of this. And well, not bad cards, but not great cards to get rid of this. And then if they use up the, like energy just to get rid of this off the board, where you can just play it again, and you're not really going to play that card to get rid of it. And then green doesn't really have a way to get rid of it outside of like removal, like KOing it. So against green and blue, this is a good card. But against yellow and red, it's gonna get, it's not gonna get triggered. So I feel this is okay. It's gonna be okay because it's good against two. It's, well, it's decent against uh, two colors, but it's bad against, like it's trash against two other colors. So it's kind of like in the middle. That's okay. So then we go on to the next uncommon, which is our Android uh, 17. So Android, both the Androids 17 and 18 both get a 4 cost, they both do the same thing, so it's a 4 cost 20k, only 5k combo, not much, but on play you can add a card for your life to your hand, then play up to 1 Android 18 with an energy cost of 3 or less when you drop, so the 18 does the same thing, but it grabbed, plays out in a 17. Now this is this is the better of the 4 drop because it has better targets than the Android 18, whereas Android 18 has worse targets than the Android 17 is available, and I feel this is a decent card. 
Actually, no, I feel this is a strong card. Because there's something we can make into. And also, as well as that, you get the bounce of good, copy, good cards. You get to play the two cost uh, SR18, which then, when you six more energy, swing draw a card. When it comes out, you can set up your energy ramp as well by drawing a card and discarding. So you can draw a card and ditch uh, like a dead fill card or anything like that, Android, so you can then ramp it with the field. And then you've got for four energy, two or like six or seven energies worth of cards, which at least two 20k swings, and then put some pressure on uh, for low energy, which is really good. And soft awakening is something that green doesn't have much of, so this is always nice to have. And yeah, so I feel that is a strong card because you're getting more you get more uh, you get more stuff out for the cost of energy. So you're paying four, but you're getting six cost worth of energy. And then even then you're potentially gaining two more like replacing itself in hand by taking a life. Or replace itself in hand by playing the eight the uh, super SR out, SR eighteen out. This we're gonna draw a card, so you kinda get six energy worth of cards. Gaining, like not losing anything from hand, and also puts a pressure on your opponent, plus also fixing your hand and setting up for ramp. So I think this is really good with the compass gun. I feel it's quite strong. Then we've got the yeah, we've got the Goku. So this is the one that's similar to Android 19. It's a two cost 15k with 10k combo, and a permanent where during your turn, if you have a Sun Gohan childhood and you drop, this card gets 10k power. So like Android 19, it can become a two cost 25k. But this is only for your turn, so defensively it's only 15k, whereas Android 6, 19, as soon as you get 6 energy, it's a 25k all the time. Now I feel this is okay, because you can get some targets for it, but you don't want to pay 2 energy for this, it's very easy to get rid of, because it's low costing, so it's easy to remove, and it's only it's good when you swing with it, but it's not it's hard to defend with it on 19, so I feel this is okay, because it's not as great as the other one. Now we've got the next one being our trunk. So we do have a two cost trunk. Sadly, it's green, so you can't really play it with blue. But if we got white color leaders and you get a green blue one, those can mix quite well. And this is strong, strong power to its cost, be a 25k for two energy, take a combo. But it's got a permanent that kind of hinders it quite like, nastily. Being permanent, this card can't attack your opponent's leader, so it can attack your opponent's board. But you want to be swinging to your opponent's leader, putting pressure with these big things over and over again. I feel this is kind of like trash. It's not great. And the last green battle card we got is the Super Combo Yamcha. Now, I'm going to put this as okay compared to the other ones being decent because you've got the King Vegeta Super Combo in the starter deck, which has got a lot more synergy, being a Saiyan card that you can ramp with like things like Turtles. And yeah, like this, like having this uh, Super Combo with Saiyan instead of Earthling has that big benefit of it. So I feel this is okay, but you're not going to be running this over King Vegeta for Super Combo. Where the other ones you can. I, I, Blue, you don't really care if it's a Videl or your Android, which is your preference. Whereas for you, the red ones, you're going to go with um, Kaba if you want a synergy with Universe 6, or Shin if you want synergy with Universe 7. Then we go into the extra cards. So we've got first one being I Beam. So this is a one cost, and if it main, choose two of your opponent's battle cards with cost of one, uh, one on us, okay with them. So I feel this is decent because it's one cost removal to remove two little one drops, and there's some good one drops in the game. So getting rid of like cantrips, you can just can't use those for free, and just using for energy if you're got energy to spare. And it's an android, so you can ramp with it. So I feel this is a decent card to help get rid of some pesky one drops because there are some good ones for quite cheap. Then we've got the brother sister combination. So this is like the um, Goku, uh, Goku Black, the uh, what's Black coming here? Where activate battle opponent's turn, choose your leader up to one of your battle cards, it gets 20k power for the turn. But then if you have 15 or more cards in your drop, you get that uh, one card with a cost of three or more for your drop to your energy in rest mode. Now it's not often you're going to fulfill that. You're not going to have that many cards. Like, uh, well, until you get really late in the game, you're not going to have many. So they're more going to be in your energy hand and on board. But when you do get to it, you can that's a nice little ramp later in the game. But it's not you're just going to use it as a one cost 20k. So I feel it's decent. It's not that strong because you're not going to get the full benefit. It's just a one cost 20k, which is still decent. But the because you're not going to get the second like additional effect off that regularly. And then we have next the um, Big Bang Attack. So this is a two cost that can be reduced by one if you have six more energy thanks to the permanent. And its effect is activate main, place one of your energy in your drop, place up to, uh, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards with a cost of five or less and KO it. Now, I feel this is okay because you can move five drop up five or less from your opponent's board, but you can do that in, the, in some of the battle cards as well. Yeah, you got a Brody, it pops anything, you got the your secret rare, secret rare Gohan as well. That's good, like, just wipe the entire board of five cost or less. 
like there's not many things five like you can hit some of the five drop battle cards but then you can just run over them or just not care and just keep forcing into their leader into a leader just trying to kill them i feel this is okay because it does give it removal but it's not the best like you can mitigate the fact that you have to sack off an energy to do it we we'll have the Goku on board, but you have that Goku see it and hope it survives to do it. And um, there's better things to do for energy. There's more extra cards that kind of like Kinder Green. Green's already quite low on combo power when it's battle cards, so it's always a hindrance there having more extras. But I feel it's okay because it's removal, but it's not not the best. So going ending there with yellow, we can see it once again. Yellow, like green, is never kind of has a strong uncommon and a trash uncommon. And it has a fair few, um, fair few okay cards being five, and then two decent cards being the extras. So I move on to our last color, being yellow. And straight up, we got the Ginyu, and this is I feel I'm gonna put this in busted the uh, Ginyu just because like in its color it is busted. Like you got most cards that just come down and they start drawing a card. But you've got this Ginyu that can stay back for ages, drawing you a card turn after turn after turn after turn. And that is because, like, in, instead of this being a cantrip when it's played, draw a card. This one is actually main switch, is card the rest of the cost, draw a card. But with things like Banan and, um, you know, things like Banan and, Ever and like, you freeze the leader, being able to restand at the end, you can keep them around unless your opponent's got removal in, um, like, uh, effect removal to get rid of them. They're not really going to be able to get rid of this because they keep doing that, drawing cards. And if you get two on board with freeze a lead or a free with a banana on there and freeze a lead, you're just going draw, 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 swing with leader, draw a card, draw for turn as well. They enter and restand them. They just keep them, and the longer they go down, the more advantage you get you. And that is insane. Like you can get quite like huge hands in yellow thanks to this card, and especially when combination with banana freeze leader, it's very good, like, very very good. And even with Ginyu lead, if you get two of these on board with Ginyu lead and use them to draw two. You can, when you use the leader's effect to tap free and discard two to restand all your Ginyu Force, you then restand this because this is Ginyu Force as well, and use it to tap to then draw two more cards, to tap in the two to draw more cards. So you kind of mitigate the cost of discarding two along with the free energy. So you make it just essentially just tap free energy to restand all your board. So I feel like this is busted. And then we have the next uh, uncommon, and that is a Chui. So this is a 10k, um, 2 energy, 10k combo, blocker, when KO'd, choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards, which is rest mode. Now, I'm going to put this straight away in trash. This is a blocker, it needs to be KO'd to get an effect, which is easy to remove. And it's not very strong, it's 10k combo, that's the only thing that's got going for it, I don't think this is good at all. Yeah, I mean, this is quite weak. And then next uh, uncommon we got, we got Jace. And I may be biased, but I'm going to put this as strong, because it's a 1 energy. 20k attack, he's only got his uh, 1 cost 15k, so already at a uh, skillless level strong for a 1 drop. 5k combo, so not the best combo, but it's got permanent return your turn if you have two or three or more cards with Ginyu Force and special traits. Along your, among your leader battle cards, this card gets, card gets 5k, com uh, 5k power. So during your turn, this gets 20k if you have itself plus every Ginyu Force in your battle and lead. So with the lead, you just need one every Ginyu Force out. You've got things like Raccoon that can come down, uh, play out and never Ginyu Force for free. Especially pay to give you that SR that untaps too, play out two more these, that gives you for free energy, four 20k swings and lead. Like, this is very strong for a one drop, I feel. The amount of pressure and give you for some um, core is kind of like very good as well. This one may be biased, but I feel like it's a very strong card. Then we got Sweet. This is a free cost 20k with 5k combo, has a crit, and then a permanent where your opponent's turn is kind of taking power. Now I'm going to put this as. Trash, oh, but it's okay. I put okay instead of trash because it does have critical and effectively it's hard to attack into. But then you're normally going to be restanding with Freezer or not playing this in the other ones because well, you can play this in cooler to swing for crit at 20k, then it's harder to kill because his tank is 30k defensively. But it's not something you want to play, it just has nice, been nice it's got nice skills, but it's not something you're going to be playing often. So I thought it's okay. So yeah, that is that. And then we have the next one being this. So this is exactly like the Zarbon from the Sardec. deck. The same power, same cost. Blocker. It has a benefit over a Zarbon of being a 10k to a 5k combo. And it's got the same kind of thing where it takes a life when you play it. But the difference between it, apart from the extra 
common power is Sarbon is optional to take a life, whereas Nessie has to. So if you get later in the game and you're awake and you don't want to take a life, if you play this you have to take a life. But Zarbon doesn't. So I feel this is still okay, just like Zarbon. Zar both this and Zarbon are okay. But um, Blocker, so it's easy to get round. It is 20k, so it can still threaten for 2 energy and helps us awaken. Um, I feel it's just okay. Like, There's better ways to awaken by play like playing other things. And uh, this is alright. When it comes to the super combo, so the effort super combo yellow is nail. So is a is a yeah nail super combo. It's actually same as the other one, but it's in the mechian. So I feel this is going to be just like Yamcha, okay, because you're rather be playing the chi life because it's a freezer army and it has more synergy with the with it has more synergy with other cards than nail does. So I feel this is just going to be a uh, yeah just okay card. Then we got banana is our next. Uh, you uncommon. Now this is something straight away but strong. So I feel this is MVP in some matchups because one nice thing you can do in yellow is turn one one energy, play Ginyu. Not use the effect, just pass or swing if you can. And then turn two, you're gonna be using the effect to Ginyu, draw one card, play banan, swing with your lead, and then turn banan will untap your freezer or your Ginyu. So that way it's safe from being attacked. And then the longer that combo survives, you can just keep going. Ginyu, draw a card, restand in a turn, go on you restand, and then if you need to be aggressive with it, you could even use Banana Swing to force your opponent to awaken to um, get them on the awaken side so you can start putting pressure with all the cards you're going to be drawing. Now this is great, especially with the Freezer Army lead, uh, well the Freezer lead, you can get Freezer can restand 2 and then Banan uh, freestand another additional one. Like Freezer restands any 2 cards, whereas Banan front, uh, restands Freezer Army, so if you have like a, free, uh, like a Freezer Clan card, a card that doesn't have Freezer Army, swing at that and use 2 other cards to use effects to swing with them. You can use Bannon to restand one of the Freeze army, then Freezer restands the other two. And the more Bannons you get on the board, the more you can like have them as swings. That you can just combo on with the extra draw power you're getting. Plus them restanding more cards, mean you can swing more things, restand them so they're protected and use the combo power. And at the very least, it's a 10k combo as well. So I feel this is a very strong card for yellow. Then we have Freezer. So this is a 2 cost 15k, 10k. And activate main switch is called the rest mode as a cost. Play up to one battle card with cost one or less and freeze army and special traits from your hand. So I feel this is decent because just like with Apple, you're getting some use out of it. You basically two, is a take a combo at the very least. It's good combo power. It's only two costs. Switching the rest mode to free play out things and only one cost. But you got some very good one cost like Ginyu. So for two and three, two energy you can get two uh, battle cards out on board. You can get the freezer and the Ginyu, and then the Ginyu can enter all cards and then. End of turn, freezer can restand both. And every turn you can get out things like the chase to be more combo, more power, get cantrips out to draw more, some like nice little one drops to help make like a, that have benefits like drawing plays or good on board to get effects off. I feel this is quite decent. Like just free playing it, like saving your energy to play stuff and then free playing out your cantrips and searches and stuff like that is really nice. And then restanding it afterwards, not too bad. And it's a freezer card, so such a Zarbomb. Freeze army, so it counts towards freeze army stuff, and freeze a clan for things like a uh, cooler them, restand it, that then re rest of them play out more things as well. So I feel this is decent, not amazing, like not not like strong, but it's still a decent card to help spam that board. But it's just not too many one drops in yellow, um, and you got to draw into those one drops. If you don't see any one drops, this is not as great. Like say, whereas like Apple and Gain, they just gain new cards, like doing something without need for anything else. But this card needs one drops to play out. To get the, to basically make use of its effect. The last one we got is the extra card Crushable. So this is similar to one of Masters where it rests nothing, but it's not a counter like in Masters. It's a counter play where your opponent plays something. They can play, you can make it come in rest mode. But this does the same thing where you put a card in rest mode, just not as a counter play. But you also draw a card to replace itself. So it's a basically one energy draw a card, switch in the rest mode. That's one of your opponent's battle cards. Any one of your opponent's battle cards, switch in rest mode, draw a card. So that's one, oh, basically one energy, draw a card, replace it, so it replaces itself. Rest something so you can attack it to, and this is great early where you don't want to be attacking to your opponent's lead to give him more cards. You want to be clear, get rid of some things off the board. Now your opponent plays a Roshi. Use Crushable, draw a card, switch to rest, swing into it to get rid of it. Same with like Ginyu, if they just use it and then restand it, get rid of it, or any little one drop cantrips or any things you want off the board. Or even battle cards you want to swing to to kind of get rid of them. Rest them, switch them, and I feel this is a strong card. It's a strong extra card. Because at the very least it replaces itself where not many extra cards do. And then it also makes it so you can force it to allow something to be attacked. We might be leaving it in active mode to leave it alone so you can interact with it. 
And that is it. That is that is come to the end of the uncommons. We can see at the end of that, yellow is the only one that had a busted card, and it also had some strong cards. Like it, still, every color had one trash uh, uncommon. A, fair, a few uh, okay's, one decent, and yeah, a fair few strong. So we can see at the end of that, the like the but I feel that in the set the bust like yellow has a busted uncommon in Ginyu because it just nets you so much va um, loads of advantage the longer it stays on. You got five, well, six, uh, six strong cards being the Roshi in red, Zamasu in blue, Android 17 in green, and then for yellow, you've got Jace, Banana, and Crushable. A fair few decent cards, with most of them being like at least two, the blue and red super combo being decent, while the green and uh, yellow ones from the set are okay because they don't have as much interaction. And some good extra cards, mainly in blue and green. Some okay, I felt like all the colors have a fair few okay ones, and then each of them had one trash. Um, Trash card in their own commons being Grand Prix for red, Play the Spare for blue, Trunks for yellow, and Chui Blocker for uh, green, yellow. So that's it. So let me know in the comments down below, like where you feel. If you feel like you agree with this, if you disagree, where you would play some cards if you don't agree with them, or um, let me know how it did in general. But that is it for me for to this one. So thank you for watching. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. And in the next one we do in the next rank list we do we'll be going over the rare cards for set one so if you're looking if you're looking forward to that stay tuned subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one bye for now